In our current video series, we've been talking about routing. And in particular, we've been talking about how we put an entry into a routing table. Now, we know that there's two different ways to do that. We can allow dynamic routing protocols to do that for us, such as RIP or IGRP, or we can do it manually. When we do it manually, it's referred to as building static routes. Now, we build static routes using the IP route command. And in our last video, we saw a good example of what an ideal situation was for a static route. And that was where we had two networks, very simple. And on each one of these networks, we had a single interface on the router that handled both the incoming and the outgoing traffic. There wouldn't have been any use of us putting a dynamic routing protocol on those routers as there was nowhere else for the route to go. There was a single route that handled everything. Excellent use of a static route. Now let's take another example and let's see how else we can use a static route to help us in a situation where we only have a single interface on a router, again, that's handling both our incoming and our outgoing traffic. So what we're going to talk about here are stub networks. And these are ideal candidates for static routes. Now a stub network is like a dead end street. There's only one link going to and from the network. And in our diagram, you see that we have these four branches. And Tampa is referred to as a stub network because it qualifies itself as being such with its single interface handling both the incoming and the outgoing traffic. Take note that the IP address in Tampa is 204.10.50.0. And if everybody on this remote land needs to get over to San Diego, Tucson, or New York, there's going to have to be something in uh, the routing table up inside of Tampa that says, yeah, for you to send this packet, for you to route this packet on our network, you have to go out my serial zero interface and go talk to New York's serial 2 interface and it has an entry inside of its dynamic routing table that points to all the other networks. Great. And what about when Tucson or San Diego or New York needs to talk to Tampa? Same thing. I got to put a static route up on New York's router that points to the serial 0 interface and lets everybody know that yeah if you go to New York you can actually get over to Tampa by going through the Serial 2 interface, which handles both the outgoing and the incoming traffic as well. And let's see how we did that. I just went up inside of Tampa. Let's go ahead and get some focus here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in the command to show my routing table. Show IP route. And so currently I have three static entries. And they point to those three remote networks that I currently have in my diagram, Tucson, New York, and San Diego. And it says that if you want to go talk to those three networks, go out my serial zero interface and go talk to the serial two interface over at New York, which has that IP address of 204.10.20.2. That's all there was to it. And of course, on New York's serial two interface, I'm going to put an entry on there pointing back to my network and you can get to this remote network in Tampa which is 204.10.50.0 by going to the serial zero interface on my Tampa router which happens to be 204.10.50.1 okay so that's all there is to it that's all I did I just put an entry to let the packets know how to get from point A to point B on my network. Now in our next video we're going to take a look at default routes. Then later on in another video we'll take a look at the null zero interface and what it's good for.